blockchain technology is a peer-to-peer -peer transactional cryptography chain. Thanks to decentralized nodes that validate and commit transactions, blockchain transactions are stored in a trustless manner. The world was initially introduced to blockchain technology and the idea of a blockchain ecosystem by Bitcoin, the first cryptocurrency ever created. We need to go back to 2008 when evaluating the blockchain's past. The Bitcoin white paper released in 2008 by the mysterious Satoshi Nakamoto, provided a solution to the double spend issue affecting online peer-to-peer -peer transactions. We have already posted the video about what the blockchain is. If you haven't watched it yet, please click on the i button at the top right corner on your screen. The world as we know will change thanks to blockchain technology. To fully appreciate the technology, we must study about its evolution. In today's video, we will learn about the evolution of blockchain in simple terms. At Finance Doc, we will be sharing more explanation videos related to cryptocurrencies, trading, forex and many more. So watch this video till the end and hit the subscribe button and click on the bell icon to get notifications for our future videos. So let's begin the video. Transactions in Blockchain By transforming transactions into trustless entities, Nakamoto eliminated the need for a middleman. In his white paper, Nakamoto outlined the issues with traditional finance, claiming that the processing of digital transactions in e-commerce had largely come to rely on third-party intermediaries. These middlemen must invest time and resources into mediating transactions, raising expenses for the parties to the transaction and reducing the chance for smaller, routine transactions, among other issues. This technique involved hashing transactions into an ongoing chain of hash-based proof-of-work and immutably time-stamping them using computational proofs. Decentralized, such a chain would function as a timestamp server distributed among willing participants. If a node were to depart and then return, it would take on a copy of the longest chain already in existence and proceed from there. Decentralizing the transaction process made it possible to engage in trustless peer-to-peer -peer interaction without the need for a middleman, which should, in theory, result in faster and less expensive transactions for everyone. But once the technology was established, users needed a means of doing transactions on top of it. This is where Bitcoin entered the picture. We now know that blockchain arrived first, not Bitcoin. Contracts in blockchain Blockchain technology has advanced past straightforward peer-to-peer -peer exchanges. Decentralized applications dApps, are now being built on top of the blockchain thanks to innovations, and security and speed solutions have improved. Much of this innovation is due to smart contracts. The blockchain ecosystem has started to function since the debut of the blockchain 1.0, or first generation, of Bitcoin. For instance, many fans view Ethereum ETH as the blockchain's future. This name refers to the fact that Ethereum concentrates more on utilizing blockchain smart contracts and focusing on blockchain applications than it does on just existing as a decentralized currency. Vitalik Buterin, the creator of Ethereum, wanted his system to take the role of the internet and decentralize all electronic transactions. Why stop at reinventing peer-to-peer -peer payments when one may also revolutionize social media, gaming, and financial borrowing and lending? But Aaron used smart contracts to further his goals. Similar to contracts in real life, 
Smart contracts are digital agreements signed between two or more parties. The process is complicated by the need for a lawyer or other intermediary to carry out a real-world contract. An immutable set of rules established prior to the creation of a smart contract is used to enforce it. These regulations are hard-coded into Ethereum's blockchain, making it impossible for anybody to change them after the contract starts and doing away with the need for a middleman. The contract will execute when both parties fulfill their side of the agreement. Applications Decentralized applications are completely trustless, enabling users to apply their skills directly without the need for a middleman. While Bitcoin has a basic implementation of smart contracts, Ethereum went one step further by giving developers a platform to create dApps that make use of smart contracts. Due to its capabilities, which go beyond those of Bitcoin, a first-generation blockchain, one can now consider Ethereum a second-generation blockchain or blockchain 2.0. After all, Ethereum makes it possible for users to build their own coins on top of its platform while utilizing the Ethereum blockchain for speed and security. For instance, developers might create a loan and borrowing application that uses just smart contracts for management. In this scenario, smart contracts would serve as an escrow and retain the cash in a secure location while facilitating the loan's lending and acting as a location for borrowers to make loan repayments. However, despite the advancements made possible by smart contracts and decentralized apps, Ethereum has serious scalability problems, which makes it difficult for it to validate transactions when its network is overloaded. This conflict arises from the proof-of-work consensus algorithm used by both Bitcoin and Ethereum. In proof-of-work, Miners are required to validate blocks by using their computers to solve challenging equations. However, the number of miners that can validate a given number of transactions is limited. The validation procedure will take much longer if there are too many users trying to transact at once. In its network upgrade known as Ethereum 2.0, Ethereum is switching to a proof-of-stake consensus technique to address these problems. Let's move on to blockchain 3.0, the third generation blockchain. Blockchain 1.0 versus blockchain 2.0 versus blockchain 3.0. Blockchain 3.0 further develops the ideas offered by blockchain 1.0 and blockchain 2.0 by bringing new consensus techniques and interoperability solutions. Many of the problems that beset blockchain 1.0 and blockchain 2.0 networks, such as scalability and interoperability, are resolved by a third-generation blockchain ecosystem. Blockchain 3.0 networks often use a new consensus mechanism to address the scalability issue, proof of stake. Instead of mining, POS requires users to stake or lock in their tokens to become validators. Before committing incoming transactions to the blockchain network, validators make sure that they are legitimate in exchange for transaction fees. Users that have an interest in a network should desire what's best for it and should put their best foot forward when it comes to transaction validation, according to the theory. Additionally, since transaction validation is quicker than mining, a network can grow as more validators join. Then there are interoperability options for blockchain 3.0. Although there are many different blockchain ecosystems, many of them are isolated from one another. Users are prevented from achieving genuine financial freedom since it is time-consuming and expensive to transfer money 
between blockchain ecosystems using a cryptocurrency exchange. One common blockchain 3.0 interoperability solution is that of bridges. Users can transfer assets between blockchain networks by using bridges, which link two or more networks. By doing this, bridges combine all different blockchain ecosystems and profit legitimately from their ability to provide financial freedom. The various types of blockchain permissions. According to a user's needs and permission level, blockchain networks that use permission-based consensus techniques enable different levels of use. When looking at blockchain from a permission-based perspective, there are additional sorts of blockchain in addition to the generations. Blockchains that are public, permissioned, or private are a few of these permission types. For a business's or a user's requirements, each of these classes offers a unique use case. Public Blockchain A blockchain ecosystem's most fundamental type is a public blockchain. Anyone wishing to use the database has access to a public blockchain. Bitcoin and Ethereum are considered public blockchains. These networks are accessible to everyone and operate decentralizedly. Instead, developers from all around the world add updates and other improvements, and anybody is free to use a public blockchain's infrastructure to create dApps. Permissioned Blockchain A permissioned blockchain, often referred to as a consortium blockchain, limits access to portion or all of the database to nodes with specific permissions. Imagine, for instance, that a centralized group is creating a public blockchain network for the rest of the globe. In that situation, that team might only be able to examine network-centric data. Private Blockchain Although blockchain technology primarily functions as a decentralized distributed ledger, the ledger need not always be made public. For instance, a company's employee database doesn't have to be shared in order to take use of the advantages provided by blockchain technology. In this scenario, a business would use a private blockchain. Then, this company can use its personal blockchain in the same way as it would a conventional database. While more sensitive information may only be accessible to C-suite executives, it may contain some information that is accessible to the entire workforce. Hybrid Blockchains Given that they combine elements of both public and private networks, Hybrid blockchains can be seen as the direction of blockchain development in the future. Hybrid blockchains with public-facing services may be used by businesses. Take a video game with blockchain technology, for instance. A team may use a hybrid blockchain if they are creating a massively multiplayer online game but do not want to make their work public. Players can still engage with the public in this fashion by registering, participating, and perhaps even enacting government by submitting and voting on game mechanics. The hybrid blockchain's private side enables the game's developers to shield the public from the game's code and internal workings. Enterprises can take into account hybrid blockchains due to their complex nature when deciding between a permissioned or private blockchain. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on our upcoming videos.